We have been treated patients with uh, different pain relievers from the last six months. And uh, we use a supercutaneous tissue pump that, it, that decreases the pain or average pain was the first hours after surgery around 8 or so in a scale from 1 to 10 and uh, with these new medications we are having less pain and the average now is from 2 to 3 in an average in a scale of uh, 10 so we are having more happier patients happier patients is that is a new pain is it paper it's not new pain is it are you still using the Nubain? You were using something called Nubain before? No, we don't use Nubain. Uh, we use uh, regular orthorable and uh, beside this, uh, this uh, other painkillers that are subcutaneous. Okay. Um, pregnancy, postoperatively. Um, what are your recommendations? People always want to know what surgery. I'm very young, I, I want to have more children what weight loss surgery would allow me to still have, safely uh, have a pregnancy and be able to nourish a fetus and will they be able to nurse their baby afterwards if they have different surgeries? Any surgery might, any patient with any surgery might have, might became pregnant. Obviously if the, <clears throat> the, the more complex the surgery the more complex the the pregnancy, but anyway, my in my experience, patients do very well with any procedures. In the case of gastric plant, it's easier to handle because uh, we just uh, release the pressure or the adjustment of the band, and we can have a regular pregnancy. In the case of uh, the other surgeries like uh, gastric bypass or sleep gastrectomy. We must have the patient uh, to have lab exams before they became pregnant, or where, where, when they are willing to become pregnant, to see that everything's okay, that you don't have anemia or any other complication of uh, vitamins and minerals. And uh, discuss the case with your gynecologist before have your pregnancy, after surgery. It's important as well that you wait at least one to one and a half years after the surgery to become pregnant. That decreases the risk of uh, the pregnancy. But you said, how's, uh, what surgery is recommended? As I said, any surgery will do fine with, uh, uh, after, after the surgery, you, any surgery will do fine with uh, pregnancy. But a lot of uh, surgeons prefer to have uh, a gastric band in the younger patients. But now, a days, which is uh, more common, the sleep is more common, have uh, patients with uh, pregnancies or deliveries after the sleep with no trouble at all. Okay. Um. People ask a lot, when can I resume normal eating after surgery? And I guess that kind of leads into what is normal eating? When can they go back? What, what is your post-op diet? When can they go back on solid foods? And how do you want that progression to go? Okay. When to resume regular diet is uh, an interesting question. <laughs> because uh, after the surgery, my point of view is that we have several steps. The first step for me is uh, like taking care of your surgery. We go back slowly back to your regular with remarks diet by giving you liquid diet, poet diet, soft food and, the, and so on. After that you already have the first step. The second step is uh, when you have an adaptation to, the, to your regular foods. What is regular food and what is regular meals? It will depend. Every single patient is different. And you must work in trial and error basis and find out which is the best food for you 
in your particular case, in your particular surgery, because the same surgery is different for every single patient. So the second step will be that you find out which food or quality of food or meals are doing better with you. The third step for me is, adapt is uh, social adaptation when you find out how to eat in outside your home with friends and uh, if you are going to drink or not alcohol, if you're going to smoke, if, you, if you're going to have any regular or, or artificial sugar. And uh, at, at this point, you will have more chances to know what do better with you. And the final step is like a maintenance diet. When you, it's not a diet that we can prescribe for patients, but it's the diet you create for yourself. Knowing that you don't have to have, you can have certain foods or you can have uh, certain uh, fibrous things like meat. Some patients can tolerate meat, some patients can tolerate fat. And uh, with all the knowledge you have so far, six or seven months after surgery, you might start getting used to a new regular diet that you will do obviously thinking on the what is the best thing to eat for you uh, that helps you achieve your goal if your goal is to lose weight and not only lose weight but keep this weight up so every single patient will create their their own regular food which will be different than the regular food they used to have um, can you talk about medications post-operatively? Um, what medications should um, bariatric patients avoid? And how, I mean, should they call you and ask before they're, because sometimes their doctors will prescribe them certain medications. What are the restrictions post-operatively medications? Talking about medication after surgery, it will depend on the restriction of the surgery. The more the restriction, the, the less uh, medication we are allowed to pass through that stomach. So we don't want patients to have too much uh, painkillers, too much non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. And uh, they, there will be certain medication that is uh, mandatory for patients. So what we must look on this medication is that they are not too big, the pills, and if they are capsule, big capsules, you must uh, release the capsule. If you can do it, you must ask your doctor or pharmacist if that is allowed, because certain medications are extended release and they are not able to, or there's no good idea to crush or open the capsule, because uh, you will have too much medication in very short period of time. So it's very, it's important to ask your doctor if uh, you can uh, go back to your regular medication and what medication must be about, might be avoided. Mm -hmm. Must be avoided. Drains. Um, some surgeons are not using drains and there are people that actually go on certain chat boards and say, oh, I'm going to use this surgeon because he doesn't use a drain. Um, why are drains important? Okay. I try to use drain in all the patients because uh, when I use drain, I have... I drain all the blood remains in the abdominal cavity that decreases the pain that decreases the, ad the additions and uh, that will help me as well to find out if uh, patients have or not any complications. For me it's important to have drains for the, at least for the first five to seven days after surgery, which is uh, the most common time of onset of uh, complication after surgery. 
uh, most of the time when the complication happens, we can be aware of that because of uh, the drainage most of the time. So for me it's important and uh, especially with the new drains that doesn't hurt when you remove them and uh, you don't need to stitch or do some, anything special to the wound the drainage leaves.